April Fool's Day. Get ready to party till you drop. Why, hello there, spooky pretties, and welcome back to Scary Movie Saturday with me, your host, Maggie. In honor of the holiday, what more perfect movie could I review than this 1986 horror classic, April Fool's Day? But before we dive into today's review, let's talk about what I'm drinking this afternoon. I grabbed me this Mike's Hard Black Cherry Lemonade out of my fridge because I more than likely do not know what alcohol is currently in my fridge. My friends have a tendency when they come over to our house for parties or hangouts, they tend to bring a shit ton of alcohol and then they never take it home with them and they either leave it in my garage or my fridge. And this is one of those items. Luckily, this tastes absolutely delicious because I've had one of these before. So I'm kind of glad this one was left over, but the random ass beer that I'll probably never drink, that needs to go. Y'all come over and come drink my beer, okay? Okay. Mmm, tasty and full of sugar. <laughs> All right, so cheers to April Fool's Day and let's start talking about it. So first I wanna show you my awesome copy of April Fool's Day on Blu-ray. This was released through Shout Factory. They have awesome releases and with covers like none other, this is one they had done and these dolls are significant if you've seen the movie but the real cover to the film or the movie poster i should say is this one and it's got all the characters that we see in the movie on this poster so like a cast poster here and on the back we've got a cast photo at the top and with one of our main quote-unquote villains in the film right there and I just really, really love this Blu-ray release. And you can also choose to either keep this cover or switch it out to the cover that's on the slip. Your choice. I always kind of like when they do that with Blu-ray art because then you can choose which one you like better. This is also the collector's edition of this film and it comes with a lot of special features like new interviews with the directors and the actors and some TV spots. So this is a good pickup guys. Check out Shout Factory. So let's start off with a little synopsis of April Fool's Day. It's about a group of college age kids slash adults going on a spring break trip to their friend Muffy's house. And it's kind of like off the beaten path because they have to take a ferry to get there. And as soon as they get on the ferry, things start happening. You don't know what's a prank. You don't know what's real. And from the entire movie on out, it kind of goes like that. And the pranks then very much become scary and real and take a turn for the worst. And you never know what's about to happen. So I really, really like this film. It gives me Friday the 13th vibes, Happy Birthday to Me vibes, just very mid to late 80s kind of feel to this movie, but it's just done so well and it's perfect for the holiday April Fool's Day. Because like I said, there's a lot of pranks, there's a lot of tricks going on, and you never quite know what's gonna happen next. Now I am going to be talking spoilers, so if you haven't seen this film, I highly recommend you shutting this off now because there is a twist to this movie and I do not want to ruin that twist for you because I think it's one of the bests in horror. Honestly, it's so fun and creative and I personally did not see it coming. So I don't want to ruin that for you, so ta-ta for now and all you people who love spoilers, stick here with me. All right, yay for spoilers! So first I wanna talk about what I loved. I absolutely love the cast. When I do these reviews, you guys will hear me talk about actors and the cast. That's one of the most important things to me in a film is the cast. If the movie itself is bad, but the cast is good, sometimes that can save it. Or if the movie is, it feels like it'll be good, but then the casting is bad, it can ruin it. So I really think, Casting makes a movie or breaks a movie. Same with television. It's one of my favorite things 
about film is seeing everybody's chemistry together and seeing how well they fit into their roles. And April Fool's Day is one of those movies that I think everyone was cast their role perfectly. All of the characters in this film play specific roles, such as the jock, the comedian, the smart girl, the princess girl, the wild and crazy girl. They all have a role to play and every single one of them was cast very, very well. Some of my favorite characters in the film include Kit, played by Amy Steele, and that name may sound familiar to you because she was our final girl in Friday the 13th Part 2. I have actually met Amy Steele in person at a Horror Hound convention, and she is absolutely fantastic. She's one of the sweetest people you could meet, and she'll talk your ear off and listen to anything you have to say to her. Like, I remember her and I just swapping stories back and forth, and it was just a really enjoyable experience meeting her. A couple other favorite characters of mine are Chaz and Arch, and both of them are kind of funny jokester type guys. And Arch is played by Tom Wilson, who is Biff in the Back to the Future trilogy. And I love Tom Wilson. I think he is hysterical. And I think every time I see him on screen, I just am really into his acting abilities and I could watch him all day. I have also had the pleasure of meeting him in person and he is just as funny in person as he is in the movies and he's turned into quite the silver fox so google him if you haven't seen him in a while. I also of course love Muffy who is kind of our villain in the movie and I say kind of for a reason. Um, she is played by Deborah Foreman and she is incredible. She goes from real sweet to real crazy in a matter of moments. So we'll, we'll get back to that. I also believe the chemistry in this cast is believable because everyone just seems to be like they are real life friends. That you would believe that this group of people are friends and that they really are going on a spring break trip together. It, the chemistry is just 100% there and it just seems like they are all there to have fun and have a good time and to party it out for their spring break. And it just doesn't seem like a forced friendship there. It just seems like they've been friends for years. So that was pulled off very, very well. I also love the setting for where this whole spring break vacation takes place. It's Muffy's family's house. I believe this is where Muffy spends her summers and so she's kind of a rich girl and it's obviously a very very nice location. It's got a gorgeous view and it just seems like it would be a really cool and legit place to party for spring break with your friends and it also seems like a place for creepy things to happen. The music in this film also really does its job setting the tone which is eerie and creepy and mysterious. I will also talk about music a lot in my reviews because just like with the cast, music is very, very important to me. And I always love when it can set the tone just from a couple notes of music. And this is one of those films that has that type of score. So from start to finish, as I mentioned, there are a lot of jokes and pranks in this film because of it being April Fool's Day. And some of them are just hysterically funny. It, they can be as simple as a chair with the legs falling out from under you and making you do a somersault or having a cigar blow up in your face or having cups that when you try to drink out of them, the water spills on you. It's just kind of some of the silliest jokes and pranks I've ever seen. And it's just one right after the other in this film. And it's, it's funny. Every time I watch this, those pranks don't get old and they just are done very, very well. And it kind of makes me want to prank some of my friends, but I don't normally have the balls to do that. <laughs> I feel like I would mess the prank up somehow. So we see some foreshadowing right in the beginning of the film when Muffy is getting ready for her friends to come. One of her maids offers to help her and she says, no, I have to do this on my own. I can't have dad have any reasons to stop me from doing what I'm doing, kind of that whole thing. And she's like, you know, this is my one shot and it's gotta be the best. And there's some weird foreshadowing there that you're kind of like, okay, why is she so stressed out about this? Like there's gotta be more to it than just being a party. So that kind of starts the tone of the film. And then we have some pranks that seem harmless, but then quickly turn dangerous. 
and one by one, more scary things start to happen. One guy gets his eye injured when they're ferrying in to the location. Another person comes up being dead in the water and then other people become up stabbed. So basically one by one, people are getting picked off and it's like, well, shit. <laughs> this went from fun to frightening very, very quickly. And, you know, it seems just like your classic horror slasher film that all of a sudden someone in the friend group has gotten pissed off or mad about something and they're killing the rest off. So you're kind of like tr trying to figure out who, who done it. It's like a who done it movie. It also has vibes of like Clue, the way this is set up, which if you watch the movie, you'll understand why I'm saying that. It's kind of hard to explain right now while it's like why it's like Clue, but it is. Anyways, so they're trying to piece together the remaining people, who it could possibly be. They're looking for clues. They're looking for suspects. And sure enough, they go up in the attic and they find clues that Muffy, their friend, possibly has a evil and sick, as in mentally sick, twin sister Buffy that is locked away elsewhere. But it looks like Buffy has escaped. So they start to think that Muffy is no longer Muffy and Buffy is the culprit of all these killings. Well, so they're getting chased around. They're trying to survive. They're Kit, played by Amy Steele, as I said, her and her boyfriend are the last couple standing. And just as you think they're about to bite the dust, they bust into a room and here's the twist. All of their friends are still alive. They're all casually chilling, having drinks, reading books and papers, acting like nothing has ever happened. And of course, Kit is like, what the fuck? It's like she's seen a ghost. <laughs> What? Here's the twist. Come to find out that this entire time, no one has been murdered. That Muffy had set up a whole like murder mystery dinner party for her friends. None of them were in on it except her cousin. And no one knew what was happening until every time they would get attacked, Muffy would update them on what was going on. So then they would have to play along to keep it going because Muffy wanted to turn this location into a murder mystery themed place where people could come and visit and book nights there. And she had to prove to her father that she could do it. So the whole time, this whole weekend has been just a massive prank. And even though that's kind of horrible to make your friends go through thinking all of them are being murdered, everybody ends up having a really good laugh. And when I saw it for the first time, I did not see that twist coming. I was like, holy crap, I haven't seen that done before. <laughs> so I also think a whole murder mystery party would be so fun. I've never attended one and I've always wanted to. And so when I watch this movie, it's always something that I have in the back of my mind that I really need to go find a place that does this because this would be a blast. So personally, there's really not anything I can find that I dislike about this movie. I love the cast, I love the music, I love the location that they're in, I love the twist, and I just love the whole story in general. It mixes horror and comedy very, very well together. And even though the entire time after you've seen it the first time, you know none of this is real, the kills and the scares and the film are still very, very effective and it never gets old watching this movie. I just love the whole plot. I love the whole finale and I think it's worth a watch. If you've never seen this film, I am now just giving it completely away. However, I did warn you I would do that. But if you would still like to give this film a shot, watch it. I personally think it's worth four out of five stars. And if you have already seen this film, I want to know what you guys think of it below. Did you love it just as much as I did? Did you also not see the twist coming? Or were you suspicious that there was something going on? Let me know. So thank you guys for tuning in to today's review. I know I didn't really say anything negative about it, but I really give it two thumbs up and I watch it every year on April Fool's Day, sometimes a few times a year because it's just that good. Give it a watch today, let me know what you think, and I will be back here with you guys this coming Wednesday for my Scream Collection series and back again next weekend for another horror movie review. 
you guys stay cool out there and keep it weird and make it Maggie.